should we should dig deeper and dive deeper into what we already know as opposed to kind of adding on stuff but it's always cool to to take a look at what's going on out there and see what's happening i'm sure that you guys are aware of probably most of these um I, I hope i have a couple that that might surprise you there was one in here that i just found the other day i'm going to throw it in at the very end and then there's a couple uh a couple cool ones a couple ones that again Maybe they're applicable to school or maybe they're just fun, but uh, we're gonna see what goes on from here. So I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna get right going. I have five different tools uh, to present. And we're gonna start out with one that I shared in uh, three from the tech team not long ago, and it is Whiteboard FI. So Whiteboard FI is a whiteboard tool um, that doesn't require students to log in and creates a whiteboard for every single one of them. So I like to think of like the little whiteboards we used to use in math class where everybody would grab one and have on their desk and then hold it up when they have the answer. This is the same here. So if you are at your desk, if you are at a computer, obviously you are, um, you can jump in. I'm going to zoom in here with this URL right here. So HTTPS uh, backslash, backslash, whiteboard.fi slash, and then the code M3TM5 if you want to jump in. So M3TM5. And once you get in, I'll say that one more. And actually, I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste that, hopefully, in the chat window here. Let's see if that worked. Oh, it did. Brilliant. So there you go. If you just want to click on that link and pop it up. All right, cool. So now I'm starting to see, and hopefully you guys see this too, is some of the different people that are popping into the uh, the whiteboard. So Dan's in there, Kelly's in there, and I can pop over and I can see my whiteboard. Oh, we got a few more. Kristen's in, Nicole's in. Awesome. And essentially what you have now, yeah, <laughs> Dan's right into it. What you have now is a personal whiteboard that you can start working on. And I see everybody's. You don't see anybody's. I see everybody's and once we're all said and done, I can actually lock this and so we can shut it down once I know my whole class is in here, we can use it for the class and then I believe it is, I wanna say 40 minutes, but I could be wrong, I, I'll have to go back and check, but I know that after a certain amount of, of non-usage, so once it's done, it just totally turns right off and this board no longer works. I can close it on my own so I can shut it down, but at this point, you guys have the ability and like you guys are doing now doing a little bit of playing i'm going to pop into my whiteboard and i'm going to grab an equation and i am going to give you this is my classic equation i always do 3x plus 2 equals 7 and I'm going to push this to all of yours. So shortly here, I can see that all of you now have the equation that I just sent to you. And I could ask you to solve that. Obviously much, much easier on a touch screen. If you're using iPads, this would absolutely be brilliant because then you would be able to just manipulate it there with your finger and stuff like that. Um, but essentially you can create this on your end. <laughs> Thanks, Anissa. <laughs> I like that. And you can send it out. Uh, Nicole is obviously going to fail this one. She's got some uh, geometric figure on there. Uh, you can send it out, ask the students to do it. You're watching to see what's going on. And perhaps, you know, I want to pull up a specific student. So we'll pull up Anissa's. I can click on it and my, I can make it bigger so the whole class can see what's going on there. Right. If there's a little bit of shenanigans going on here, I can grab it. And so I can uh, save that whiteboard. And also if I think Nicole's just fooling around, or sorry, Anissa's just fooling around, I can kick her out and I can do that as well. Not that I would in this case, but so we can pull it up, but we can take uh, take some pictures there. We can grab what we need. We can show, allow the kids to do the work. That's awesome. Um, and uh, Jyothi's uh, actually doing the math, which is brilliant. I love it so much. So, um, and get that out to people and uh, and make it work. So, so there is tool number one, five minutes, super simple whiteboard. There, the setup was really simple, whiteboard.fi, start a new class, you get the option as to either start a class or join a class. I click start a new class, which allows me then to start that, go from there, 
Um, it gives me a few options on what do I want to do. Do I want a waiting room for students? Uh, in which case I have to allow them in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, do I want to just enable everybody in there? Do I want to enable picture upload so I could turn picture upload on um, or do I not? Some ideas on saving bandwidth and stuff are in there. But then I also have my extensions inside of here. So once everybody's in, I can lock that room and nobody's in there. I can clear all your whiteboards and everybody's going down to zero, right? And start all over. So I can do that once I've done. Uh, slow mode and simple mode. I can force simple mode on you guys, which is essentially just a bit of a, a, a simpler uh, interface. It, I don't know. I don't think it's that big a deal, but it's a bit of a simpler interface. And then there's also a slow mode that can be enforced for students, uh, which essentially is for saving bandwidth and everything like that. So um, even if you don't have simple mode turned on, students can still jump to simple mode on their own at the bottom of the screen and likewise can jump to slow mode if they find their bandwidth is slowing down. So, all right, so I will, uh, I'll stop there. Is there an undo button in there? Can you save the student whiteboard once it's finished? So you can take a picture of the whiteboard. So if you have something, or you can do a screen capture. I mean, easiest possible way is you have all of them on there. You do a screen capture. Uh, depending on what kind of computer on, there's different ways to do that. But essentially, capture the screen, and you have that saved. If you want to grab individual ones, you can click on it like we saw with Anissa's, make it bigger, and then just capture from there. Take a picture of it, I believe. Uh, if I take a look here, under my class, I can grab, uh, here we go, Anissa has one again. And then down into her actions, I can do a save whiteboard. And it's gonna give me that, that then I could download, right? So then I could save that image as whatever I want, but it's gonna pop open. And it has some characteristics up here, essentially. It doesn't really mean much to us, but it has to do with the time and whatnot, I think. Usually these are what they are, time stamped and stuff. So, But we do see that it is Anissa in the front. So um, I guess the big downfall to this would be that uh, if a student wants to put Mr. Butt on there, they could potentially have that. We can then kick them, and then they would have to come in on their own, but that's, a, that's another option there. So, uh, And an undo button. I did not see an undo button. So... I mean, you can play around and see. I think uh, I think it's it, it literally is a whiteboard. So there's no undo button on the whiteboard. In this case, it's, you know, wipe it all or wipe a little bit, uh, but there's no undo button there, I don't think so. So yeah, cool, there's number one. Okay, questions, more questions. All right, perfect. I'm gonna stop presenting there. I'm gonna jump over to uh, my next one. Um, which I'm sure you guys have heard of. So if you have, just throw it in there, which is Flipgrid. Anybody, has anybody not heard of Flipgrid? I use it all the time. Yeah. I hope so. I haven't. Okay, cool. Brilliant, Kristen. We are going to show you Flipgrid really quick then. So LG, I, PS full display. Here we go. Okay, so what Flipgrid is, is essentially a way for your students to respond to you verbally or orally uh, and, and with video as well. So essentially you create your Flipgrid and I have a couple of them here. This one is for a class that I was working with at Calgary Christian. All right, and so they created a Flipgrid. I'm actually a co-teacher, or they call it a co-pilot in here. This is one I've just been fooling around with at home. And this is one we created for the numeracy team that didn't actually uh, get much use out of it. So, so you create this grid, and then inside of there, you're gonna invite your students. We can share that with the class and use a classroom sharing code, um, but we can also get them QR codes. And the QR codes allow them to log in Essentially, they're gonna come up here and this first post is say hello to Flipgrid. So what we wanna do is we just wanna to respond to it. And we're gonna share that, that link to our class. We can share it directly into Classroom, no big deal there, right? So we're gonna share that link and I'll show you how to create these in just a second.
and it's going to pop up and now our kids can come in and they can respond to this the cool thing is is that they we can turn it on so that they can see each other's responses and in this case this was me and this was my little guy actually responded to one of mine so what you would do is you would create your assignment up here you would tell the students what you want to do potentially even adding in uh, a video of your own in this case they just have a gif that they've pulled in but you could add in your own video giving the instructions for what you want them to do or talking to them about something and then down here they're going to record their response so they're going to click on the plus and it gives us in this case i set it to a minute 30 seconds but you can have up to i think it is five minutes to respond to these different pieces and all they do is they click record and they start saying their their answer their response so next week i'm going to do one on uh, storytelling and um public speaking and i think that this is a really cool way where you could practice storytelling and public speaking with very little you know anxiety or something like that because you're not speaking to anybody you're speaking to a video right uh you can turn these functions off down at the bottom but they have the ability to apply stickers so if we wanted to throw in a sticker here, they can put that in. You can turn that off for the little ones who may have uh, issues. They can put in a whiteboard. So we could bring up that whiteboard and you can write on it. So we have the ability for students to start showing something. Again, if they have a touch screen, they could touch and write something and be speaking out their answer. So again, the idea is, how do we get them demonstrating that they know somebody, something aside from just writing that down? How do we get them talking through their learning? I'm gonna turn this off here. And we'll go back in here. There is, uh, they can upload uh, photo stickers, they can do drawings, they can do a whole bunch of stuff. But essentially, they record that, they post it up there, you get an indication that they have answered something. And then you can either open that up to students to respond to, uh, or you can open it up and uh, you can just keep it for yourself. So Kelly, you use it all the time. Is there something you wanted to throw in here? Something you're like, this is how I use it. It's very cool. And feel free to unmute your mic, go ahead. Or don't, either way. Sorry, my mic button wasn't coming on. Um, I use it for French all of the time. So it's a way that I can get students to um, demonstrate their ability to pronounce certain things. They share presentations on there. Um, I love it for second languages, but that's that's what I use it for primarily. Yeah, so so essentially the audio recording, right? Hearing their audio, hearing their uh, their pronunciation of the actual word as opposed to how it's typed out and stuff. Right. I mean, just just this past week, they were uh, learning family members. So they introduced their family and a lot of them actually brought their family members into the videos. That was kind of fun. They got pretty creative with that. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Cool. Just Thank you, Kelly. Good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's awesome. No, uh, very simple. It is very simple to create. So once we do have our uh, grid, our grid is essentially our classroom. That's where our kids are coming in. Then we create our topics underneath that. So we can add our new topic, give it a title, again, description, record, set the recording time. If we want it to be a quick one or a long one, sorry, it's 10 minutes now. Um, we can moderate these so they can be hidden until we say, yes, it's okay to go. If there's a lack of trust there or something like that, uh, we can allow the addition of other media if we want. Right. And we can also in here turn off the ability for them to have stickers and stuff like that. And I would need to find that down here. We can turn off the ability for them to add stuff uh, and put things in there. So thanks. Yeah. So very, very simple one on here. Very, very easy to add and stuff like that. Just a cool way to interact with your class. I know that a big push right now is, is with ensuring that we're, we're keeping these connections alive and we're, we're staying connected to our students and making sure that, uh, that they're happy, they're healthy, everything's going on well. This is a simple way I would say to just keep that connection and that community going and kind of give them a fun place to play. You could give a fun one of these uh, just to play in and, and have it available there. So, so I'm just looking to see if there's any more questions. If I can add one thing, Jason, um, one thing that I have learned is 
originally when I started creating my Flipgrids, I didn't realize I could set it to have other students like view their classmates' videos. And um, I have a lot of students that are actually quite anxious about having others see their videos. So now my default setting is I don't share it with the class unless it's something where I want them to respond to each other. And then I make sure that they are informed that it will be visible to all ahead of time. Um, and then those students, if they don't want to show their face or they want to do that privately, I give them that option. But that's just something to be aware of because they don't all like having their videos shared with the whole class. I think that's a good point, Kelly. That's a super good point. Just to make everybody aware, we always talk now and, and you're I'm assuming you're probably going to see something coming out in the fall. There's a lot of stuff going on with privacy, but the idea of any time you bring in a new tool, you know, making sure that parents are informed of what you're using it for and how you're using it. And this just takes it one step farther where we have that, you know, here's content images of, of students or videos of students. Just make sure that they know how they're using it. So I, I totally agree with that. Okay, cool. There's number two. I got to speed up because we're going to run out of time. It's okay. Okay, number uh, three. Has anybody heard of Rocketbook? Okay, so Rocketbook is uh, is an app and a physical book. And actually, I'm going to stop presenting so that you can, this is gonna be upside down. I'm gonna try here to see what I can do. Switch to my document camera. Hopefully there we go. Okay, cool. So this is my rocket book. It came, I got it from a conference. It was from these guys, ed tech team. And essentially it's just, just pages. This one's just dotted and it's probably a little bit tricky to see and stuff like that. This is just dotted pages. But what I want to show you is down at the bottom. I mean, there's two important things here. One, there's a black border. It seems pretty lame, but there's a black border. That's important. There's a QR code, that's important. And then I don't know if you guys can see this, it's sort of tricky here, but if we get nice and close, you'll see all of these little images down at the bottom, okay? So essentially, let me switch back, sorry if I make anybody seasick there. Essentially what this allows us to do is to document what we're doing, and I'm gonna jump on my phone because I have it on my phone as well, is document just notes and whatever else in regular time. Everything is just normal. Uh, you don't have meat on here, there we go. Sorry, 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 sorry. Is that better? I think so. Getting a little bit of feedback here, let's see. Are you still getting a little bit of echo? I hope not. Small not. Okay. okay. I am. Um, why am I not muted here? Right, I'm going to mute this. All right, so I'm gonna use this one and, and hopefully uh, this other one's muted, but hopefully you're hearing me through this one here. So so what we have is, we're gonna present my screen from my camera here or from my, uh, all right, cool. So what Rocketbook allows you to do, we'll go to the main page of Rocketbook here. What Rocketbook allows you to do is each of those little icons that were on the page is actually allows you to set up a different destination. So the idea behind it is we can take notes because I, I, I much rather enjoy writing than I do typing. I find it, uh, I don't know if the retention is better. Some, some 
you know, some of the research says retention is better. I, I have nothing to say that I disagree with it or I agree with it, but it allows us to take notes as normal. And then if we fill in one of those dots, it allows a, a specific um, location to be sent. So for example, the very first one I have set to my email, just my Palliser account. The second one I have it set to two emails. So I have those, the two emails here are my Palliser account and then my personal account. Um, the third one, the Apple, it will store it right into my Google Drive. So it allows me to set a specific folder in my Google Drive. In this case, it is the uh, testing grounds folder I have. And it allows me to have some control over what type of content is coming to me. So my file type here is PDF. It bundles it all together. So it allows me to scan more than one page at a time. So if I'm taking multiple pages of notes, uh, auto send, there's a small little piece where it says, do you want to send this? You know, do you want to rename it or just send it? So you can turn that on. Um, OCR, it'll do optical character recognition. So from handwriting, it will recognize that and it'll change it to words. And then uh, we can have it set as one file or two files. So if we do OCR, it'll send, we can have it sent as two files, which is uh, one file being um, the PDF and the second file being uh, the transcribed one, or we can have it all in one where they do um, the transcribed text with at the very top, a JPEG in there. So I'm gonna set it to two. Now, I already have one set up here. So I'm going to change to my camera and you see it grabs that. So it recognizes the edges and it recognizes what I have filled in. I just keep snapping the same picture. I should probably change to a different picture. Uh, this one is just sent to email. And it just keeps going through. And so we're capturing those pages. And you see down at the bottom, we're up to three pages captured. I'm going to click on next. It's going to do a little bit of processing here. And this is where it is. Do you want to rename it? That's up top here. I'm not going to rename that. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then we're going to say done. And it's going off. It is sending. So I'm actually going to disconnect from the meet now. And we'll come back here. So hopefully we can, uh, yeah, all right. Everybody's hearing me. And what actually happens now is those get mailed directly to me or saved into my uh, Google Drive. So how could we use this? We could use this with our students. And uh, Rocketbook actually provides some free pages. So we could get free pages to our students or print them off and then have our students do their work or their drawing on there and have mom or dad download the app, download the uh, app on their phone, snap that picture and it would automatically email it or automatically deposit in your Google Drive. So you could provide instructions on in your daughter's account, you know, create or your son's account, create a folder called this and add this as an extension or add this, you know, add my email to the first dot. Make sure your child, you know, colors in that dot anytime they do their work and then just a simpler way of getting their work as opposed to take a picture, copy it into your email or something like that. I, it's, it does seem a bit more complicated, but in some cases, I think once we get used to it, it would just send it to us super simple, super easy. So we're gonna see, it should have given it enough time to send, but just to be sure, I'm gonna share the Rocketbook page. If you go to getrocketbook.com, that's where you can figure out all of the, um, all of the stuff, where the apps are, what type it is. There's a whole bunch. They actually have one of these that you can just wipe clean. They used to have one that you would put in the microwave. So you'd put it in the microwave with a little bit of water and it would actually wipe it clean. They have these Rocketbook beacons. You put those on the corner of your uh, whiteboard and it will actually recognize those corners. So if you have a, a piece of your whiteboard that you know you always work in and you wanna capture, you stick those on that whiteboard or anything. And when you hold the rocket book, it recognizes those corners and it captures anything in the middle. You have to set those ones up differently. I haven't played with that. But down here at the very bottom under resources, there is free PDF pages. And inside the free PDF pages, they have 
five different ones. If you go to the Get Free Rocket Book pages, it has the same ones, just in a slightly different um, style. It's an A4, so more European sort of standard uh, instead of the letter. But they have graph paper, line paper, uh, music, and then a goal agreement and, and doc grid. I think that these three are the big ones that we want to use, but it allows you to grab those, create those, have the students create, and then very quickly take that picture and fire it off to you without, you know, without having to worry about uh, all the other bits. So, excuse me, if I look in my testing grounds, I should see, here's my PDF. creates a PDF that can be shared. So again, it's in my drive. It's just a file in there. I can share it with whoever I want. It's in there, good. And let's jump back to this. Here's my transcription of it. Transcription didn't work out so well here. It didn't do well on the little picture at the bottom. And then it was spacing my line. So um, Maybe something where the transcription isn't perfect. Obviously, it's not perfect. There are better ways that we can transcribe those and stuff like that. But at least we're getting some content and some information maybe to work with. So, so it might be something that uh, to take a look at. Might be something cool. It may be not. So, I got four minutes left. I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to jump into the this one. How many of you guys have heard of PlayingCards.io? This one is totally just for fun. So playingcards.io nobody nobody's answering so never heard of it okay at least nicole is answering okay so this is like an online playing cards game so you can create a room inside of here and play cards with somebody far far away so the movements are synchronized when you move it on one screen it moves it on the other it is very simply a room. There is no chat along with this. There's no conversation. There's nothing. It is just simply a room. So you would need to set up either a phone conversation or potentially a uh, you know some type of conference where you could look at. But they have a few of them set up here. If we grab onto this, we'll go into obviously cribbage. Uh, it is not, it, sorry, it is free, but because it's free, there's going to be advertisements in here. So you want to see, um, gives you how to play, tells you how it's set up, tells you how it's scored. And let's start a game. Gives us a link that we can share with somebody else. And once we get in here, it gives us our board and we can start to take a look at the board. We can shuffle it. We can, you know, deal cards. So when we put them down here, this is our hand. And we would, if we had other people in here, they would have a place where you could put their hand. So essentially it is just a way to do it. It is very simple. It's not going to automate the counting. Um, we were playing checkers the other day and it doesn't automatically flip over the Kings and stuff like that. But essentially it's just a way for people to connect and play. I know that I played a lot of blackjack growing up, not because I was living on the streets or anything, but that was maybe the only game my dad knew. Um, and, and I don't know if that's why I can add numbers quickly or I can add to 21 really quickly. Uh, I still stink at blackjack, but I played a lot of that. So I, I, to me, card games and playing games and stuff like this, super fun, super simple, super fun. Uh, you just gotta jump in and play with it. There's lots of tools. There are all the stuff on the side, but that was, playingcards.io. So I'll drop that one. Uh, I'll drop that one in here just in case anybody is still along and listening. Okay, and the last one, this is the one I just found the other day. It's called Brain Ventures for K-12. It came from Michigan uh, and, and Michigan State, it looks like to me. So it seems kind of interesting. I don't I don't know, I'm struggling with this one. It seems kind of fun, it seems kind of interesting, but essentially every day a new brain venture is posted. And, or sorry, every week, every week a new brain venture is posted because these are the same ones and it said yesterday's for uh, yesterday when I was there as well. So so I think it's for every week. And when you click on them, there's, there's just two different slots, K to two, so our young, young ones, and then three to six, so our slightly older ones. It gives you a link that you can post in your, or, and you can post directly into your Google Classroom, but it gives you a link you can co copy and send to your kids. And when you jump into it, 
it does ask you to log in. I did have to give it access to my Google account. So I had to say, yes, that was okay. Uh, I looked at the permissions. I was okay with that, um, but I take some risks sometimes. So uh, it's something you wanna be sure of. And essentially it gives you a list of a, a driving question and then like almost a flow chart for the students to follow along with. So in this one, will there be crayons in the future? You can hear it and when you're done, you just say complete it, right? and it lets the student know where to jump in. Um, yeah, I would definitely take a look at it, Nicole, yourself. I, I didn't see anything that I was unhappy with, but I also need to, and, and it, I don't like to do this, I'm jumping ahead, I didn't review the privacy policy before I showed it to your, you guys and stuff like that. It's something that I wanna look at, but I would definitely take a look at it yourself as well, so. Um, who is the crayon man? It gives you an activity. If you click this, it will read it out to you, but it gives you an activity which pops open another screen in a lot of cases. And in this case, it's asking us. So, I mean, obviously it's connecting to another one that's connecting to another one uh, in some cases. My last one didn't. My last one took me to a, uh, a brain pop game that I was looking at and I was playing and stuff like that. Uh, so it didn't ask me to log in again. Um, but it takes you to, let's see if there's a brain pop one in here. These are all collaborative stuff. Let's pop back here, because this was the one that I was on the other day. And it, uh, here's my web resource. Is there light in the deep sea launch activity? And it brought me to a junior brain pops or brain pops junior and it started playing the video and uh it gave me little bits and stuff like that so so it was just kind of a learning pathway for these students to sort of go through and see what was going on i thought that was kind of cool i again it's something i would have to explore a little bit further to see what's going on but i thought it was just a fun one to share especially as the kids go on they can come back to it and keep track of where they're at every day and move forward um and then it connects with different pieces as well. So so I am two minutes over. Uh, I'm willing to stick around and stay and answer questions if you have any, uh, or if you want any of the links that I was doing, or if you want me to showcase anything more, let me know. But other than that, thanks for joining. Uh, next week's are up there. Next week's is kind of about planning for next year. Uh, already, I'm starting to think that we're not gonna add too many new things right now, um, but uh, it's just some ideas on offering options and stuff like that in the fall, some things that you can do online if you're not face-to-face -face or if, even if we are face-to-face, -face, but have access. Any negatives with the rocket book? Um, I don't think so. There's, it takes a little bit of setup. It is quite easy. I think there are eight different ones in there, uh, eight different dots that you can fill in. The, the biggest thing is just remembering to use them, Anissa. So I'm going to stop the recording.